Right now on Denver 7 News at 5 o'clock, fire danger remains high across the front range. So crews are working on three existing fires right now, and they hope rain and snow on the way will help them. Gas prices are creeping up ahead of the unofficial start to summer. Experts warn everything from your morning commute to your summer vacation is going to get more expensive. And the abs are inching closer to lifting Lord Stanley's Cup. Game two is tonight against the Blues, but Ball Arena is still rocking from that overtime goal. Yeah, this morning we are hearing from the hero of the night, Josh Manson, about his first ever playoff goal. Uh, what a time he picked to break out, yeah. and he was mic'd up for it. I, all. Uh, yeah, exactly. You heard it. Yeah. Right there. So very cool experience there. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday. I'm Brian Sanders, and I'm Nicole Brady. Our weather action day coverage starts today mm. uh, because today is warm and dry with high fire danger. But uh, we are going to see a huge shift soon, Lisa. You're either going to love what I have to say or, or just hate it. Mm. Yeah, uh, snow is on the way and it's going to be heavy in spots. We're going to take a look at some potential snowfall totals coming up here in just a few minutes. But yeah, let's get you through the hot and the windy part first. Right now, wind gusts this morning anywhere from about 5 to 15 miles per hour. We're going to see those winds kick up by late morning, 11 to about 12 o'clock. We'll start to see some gustier conditions as things start to warm. We're in the low 60s right now, though, here in Denver. Uh, there's going to be a little mix of sun and clouds early this morning. Highs are going to be anywhere from 85 near Parker to 88 in Denver, near 90 in Fort Morgan and Greeley, 60s and upper 70s for the foothills. Evergreen this afternoon, 78. Wind gusts later on today between about 40 and 50 miles per hour. Those winds are going to be coming in out of the west. By uh, tomorrow, they shift out of the north, and this is what we're looking at by lunchtime tomorrow. Good snow falling in the northern and central mountains, scattered showers across the plains, and then this rain, when it's cold enough, is going to switch over to snow Friday night into Saturday. We'll take a closer look at the timing of some of this and again, how much snow we could see from the spring storm coming up. Yeah, I think the foothill roads are going to be really tough at times as you make your way to the west, and it will be really impactful here along I-70 and Highway 6 and all these foothill roads, Boulder Canyon, anything to the west. It's going to see quite a bit of snow right now. As you can take a look at the camera at I-70, right at I-25, still had some flashing lights to kind of see them up back here uh, on I-70 east and westbound as they were wrapping up the overnight construction drive times are really pretty standard for you about anywhere you want to go right now as they're wrapping up that work out at the airport a day of another long security wait times 20 to 30 minutes out there right now and we will have some uh, delays along the D line that goes along Santa Fe right now driving that way looks fine but there's going to be some overhead line work today and tomorrow that will delay it I'll have the details for you coming up in just a few minutes well, as the fire danger ramps back up today, we are closely monitoring three fires burning across our state. Crews are hoping the cold and moisture on the way will help battle the flames. Uh, an update now, though, the Plum Top fire burning near Pagosa Springs is still 0% contained. It started on Tuesday and has now grown to 735 acres. Meanwhile, in Teller County, crews are battling the High Park fire mm -hmm. that's near Cripple Creek. It's nearly 1,600 acres. Crews are making progress, though, and say it's 87% contained. The newest fire is near the Great Sand Dunes National Park. It is 306 acres, 80% contained. Entrance to the park was closed for several hours. It has since reopened. I want to get to Denver 7's Veronica Costa now with how a new state law will better prepare communities and first responders for these fires. Hundreds of people lost their homes in the Marshall Fire, and many of them, they're still re struggling to rebuild. Now, these measures would actually help others avoid that struggle if something like this were ever to happen. So that's where Senate Bill 206 comes in. It helps on both sides of a disaster. It creates a special department within the governor's office to come up and coordinate a preparedness plan for something like a natural disaster. It also creates a fund to rebuild homes, businesses, or buildings for other groups that were lost to fires or other natural disasters. Now, grants and loans, those will be available, but the rebuilding has to be stronger and greener than before. Here's the bill's sponsor, Steve Fenberg of Boulder, after it was introduced. But if they do want to rebuild and we want to make it so that they can stay in their community if they'd like to, we also want to make sure they're rebuilding in a way that's climate smart so that if and when another disaster like this happens, that they're actually building in a more resilient way. 
Here's what the funds in this program will be able to be used for. They're going to be able to pay for part of the cost to repair or rebuild a homeowner's home not fully covered by insurance, rebuild neighborhoods plan to resist the impacts of natural disasters, provide money to a business experiencing a loss or interruption of business because of needed repair as well. So the bill, it was signed into law yesterday and per the bill, the state treasurer has to transfer over $15 million to that fund as soon as it's effective. We're in Lakewood this morning. I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Thank you, Veronica. The aftermath of a wildfire closed access to Hanging Lake, a popular attraction in Glenwood Canyon. We have learned the beautiful landmark will reopen next month, a little sooner than expected. The Forest Service gave us new video and pictures of a temporary trail that will open to Hanging Lake June 25th. Work on restoring the permanent trail will begin later this summer. Reservations for Hanging Lake go on sale Monday. We are just a little over a week away from Memorial Day weekend and gas prices are already starting to reflect the kickoff to the summer travel season. The AAA national average is up to $4.59 a gallon. Colorado is a bit lower, $4.14 a gallon, which is a new record for us. Denver 7's Jessica Crawford uh, joins us on I-25 this morning. Jessica, experts say we're on track to break $5 a gallon soon. That's right, we sure are. And yes, we're here on I-25. We are making that work commute, just like a lot of people here in the Denver Metro. And a lot of the people on the road this morning probably have experienced sticker shock recently, just getting gas. And yes, prices are expected to crack $5 um, over this summer. Definitely something to think about as you um, plan those road trips and just those local summer trips as well. So according to Gas Buddy, 70% of people surveyed said that their summer travel plans have been affected by high gas prices. More than a third of people surveyed said that inflation has made planning a lot more difficult. AAA has the average price of regular gas at about 414 in Colorado. This time a year ago, the average was about 309, a big change there more than a dollar increase still some places in the metro are already seeing five dollar gas Yardeni research shows that households are spending about five thousand dollars a year in gas this year that's compared with 2800 a year ago experts say that the price is due to tight supply and uncertainty in ukraine we did speak with gas buddy researchers there tell us that the imbalances between supply and demand are likely going to continue unless there is a big slow down in the economy. I'm afraid that, uh, you know, by and large, the high prices will probably stick around for a good majority of the summer. My concern is that hurricane season starts in a little over two weeks, uh, and that could also cause some shutdowns and refining capacity at a time we can ill afford it. And experts at JP Morgan say that they are forecasting our August gas prices to be around $6.20 per gallon as a national average. I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. Well, two of the most popular NFL teams are teaming up this summer. The Broncos and Cowboys will get together for two days of practice during training camp at Dove Valley. So mark your calendar for August 10th and 11th. The practices will be free and open to the public and they will be popular. Then the teams will have the first preseason game on Saturday, August 13th at Empower Field. Meanwhile, on the ice, the Avs are back at Ball Arena tonight for Game 2 against the Blues. Fans are still celebrating Game 1's overtime win with a spectacular goal from Josh Manson. And new this morning, we are hearing his mic'd up reaction to the game winning moment. Yeah, a little flick of the wrist to the back of the net, and the Avs secured a 3-2 overtime win over the Blues. Manson had never scored a playoff goal in his career, and what a time to notch his first. It was a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. You know, it, it feels good to, uh, to get that with your team. You know, that's the best part about playoffs is it's a team effort, and you get to win with your team. I feel like he's hiding his excitement there. Uh, the puck drops at 7.30 tonight. 
for game two. Hope they can keep it going, Lisa. He had to calm it down after that scream during yeah. the game. Yeah, so fun to hear. It's going to be a good game tonight. We're looking at the temperatures that are going to be near 80 degrees by about 7 o'clock. They're around Ball Arena. Breezy but mild. We'll be at about 70 by 10 o'clock, a little closer to the end of the game. So you have some pretty nice conditions around Denver. It's going to look a lot different by Friday night into Saturday. We'll take a look at this next storm coming up. It'll feel like hockey season on Friday night. <laughs> right now we have a pretty good drive in most areas, including the Gap Project is wrapping up the overnight construction. You might find a slow spot here or there, but you can see down here through Larkspur, the pavement is getting a lot more smooth and the paint lines are getting a lot more clear as well uh, as they continue that work down there in the Gap Project. So right now the overall drive looks pretty good. Well, we're watching Wall Street this morning after a dismal end to trading yesterday. What set off the dramatic dive in the major stocks? Plus, he had me over his shoulder and he was yelling, officer down, officer down. And thinking about that even right now, I still get goosebumps because it was hard for me to believe that I was the officer down. Yeah, she came through in the right moment, stopping the Lakewood shooter from taking more lives back in December. We are sitting down with the heroic police agent getting ready to head back to work.